Welcome back. So, by listening to the previous sections, you're now a little more familiar with the spiritual components that make up who you are. And whether you walk around as a man or a woman, and regardless to any sexual preference, you contain both the primal masculine and the primal feminine. They are two parts of our whole, the primal Adam and Eve lying latent within us. And the trick is to bring both of these parts of you forward as they're useful to you. You toggle between them. And typically, we don't really do that evenly. We may do it a little bit or in certain circumstances, but typically, we try and balance ourselves by locating our seemingly missing piece or component somewhere on the outside through another person or it can even be another event, believe it or not. But there is an entirely different method of relating that evolves quite naturally when you have mostly balanced your primal masculine and primal feminine within you because only then are you no longer experiencing that need or hunger to find that balance externally. You are no longer running around seeking the yin for your yang. You've found your yin and yang within you, which doesn't mean that you abandon this wonderful interplay of yin and yang with others on your storyboard, but rather you are finally free for once to experience it however you like. That's what happens. But when we operate out of lack, we can't do this. It's like we're sleepwalking, constantly searching for this external balancing partner. But when you have already found this balance within you, and so has whoever you are interacting with, then there is true magic on your storyboard. There is a new level of relating that is free from the hunger of lack. So, interested? I thought you would be. So, enough about all that. How do we begin to find this? Well, this first tool I'd like to offer you to consider is so easy that I'm going to warn you about it because it's so easy that many of you won't even try it. That's the sad truth. We're crazy like that. If something seems too easy, well, we don't think it can be of much use. So I hope that you are one of the ones who will genuinely go on and try it and give it a fair run. If you do, you will immediately feel such a wonderful sense of balance coming to you. And here's all you do. There are only two things you need and they're both super, super easy. The first thing you have to do is to notice the flag. I always picture like in football, when there's been an illegal or inappropriate action, I think, I don't really follow football, but I've seen it on TV, and I see the referee throw down a flag. In your life, these flags are thrown down whenever you feel angry, or afraid, or sad, or unhappy. Whenever any of those emotions arise, or others like them, I want you to see one of those little yellow flags hitting the field. That is the first thing that you need to do. Simply recognize these flags. Can you do that? Sure you can. So, when you feel any of those things before you react, see that yellow flag and stop for just a moment. If you need to walk away in order to stop, do so nicely. If you need to hang up the phone in order to stop, do so nicely. If you need to ask to be excused for a moment, 
do so nicely. Or if you are able to still remain engaged without a problem and stop, that's fine too. Wonderful even. But if you can't, and sometimes we can't when we're dealing with those types of emotions, don't feel bad about creating that break in order to stop. Okay? Because in doing so, you are interrupting your knee-jerk reactive behavior. You're giving it time out. And this gives you the opportunity to deploy the super simple tool. The super simple tool is what I call the rule of four. Now, eventually, you may find that your rule is the rule of three or the rule of six. It will depend on you. But for me, four seemed to be a good number. And so, before I react to any of those emotions that I just listed, I simply require myself to interpret the situation in four possible ways. For example, let's say someone makes a hurtful remark to you. You might feel like slinking away to lick your wounds, or you might feel like lopping their head off, or you might feel like standing there and trading insults. But when you feel any of those feelings, see that yellow flag hitting the field and know you should stop. If you're having a hard time controlling yourself, find a way to step away. Make a way to step away nicely. And then find yourself four different ways to look at that situation. In this example where someone said hurtful things to you, the first of the four ways to look at this might very well be that that person is a hateful you-know-what. <laughs> and that, that can be one. But look deeper. Did they have someone hurt them? Or perhaps it's even an ongoing act that has been following them through most of their life. Do you see the fingerprints of that possibility in their life? That might be number two. Or maybe they have acquired the erroneous perspective that the easiest way to feel better about their self is to tear another one down. And so their act of putting you down is really a statement of their own lack of self-esteem. That could be number three. Or maybe someone they looked up to somewhere along the way, like a parent or an esteemed boss, maybe they treated them in a similar manner. And when this happens, it's not uncommon for that person to unconsciously pass that same behavior along for a little while. And doing that is actually their attempt to prove to themselves that the treatment they received from this person they held in esteem was quote-unquote good for them or the right thing to do. I mean we've all done this at least a little bit sometime or another. Sometimes we unconsciously pass along the very thing that we didn't enjoy to others. That might be what's happening with this person and that could be reason number four. Now here it's what you are doing when you make yourself stop and give yourself four possible ways to interpret what you're experiencing. You are engaging your primal masculine. He is the one who sorts and categorizes things like that. Your primal feminine could perhaps offer one or two scenarios, but asking for four is the breaking point for me personally. My primal feminine right now is not capable of offering me four scenarios. She runs out of ideas because that is not her forte. It's his. And when you have activated your primal masculine, then you are no longer just reacting blindly based upon emotions or beliefs. And that's what you want to do. Now, your number of scenarios you have to come up with may vary. You may need to ask six questions to activate your primal masculine, or 10, or maybe only two. It depends upon you, 
but until you can tell, I would start with four. Your primal feminine doesn't do well with questions like these, and so if you demand enough of them, you will call forward your primal masculine because she can't do it. And once you have done that, you will find your objectivity. You will at least somewhat regain your center and you won't simply react. Now, I know this sounds simple, but I swear to you, this will change your whole life if you will only try it. If the whole world would stop and do this simple little trick of first recognizing those yellow flags and finding a way to stop or interrupt their reactive behavior and then quickly require yourself to come up with four possible scenarios or ways to look at what you're experiencing, it would be a different world. And this is how global changes start, one person at a time. You contribute this gift to your world, to you, to your storyboard by employing this simple little tool in as many situations as you can manage. And when you do, you will watch your whole world change. You will virtually erase the collateral damage caused by the primal feminine being allowed to swell her banks and flood the town. The act of asking the question is what calls forward your primal masculine because he is the part of you who answers such questions. Pretty cool, huh? It is. Your primal feminine might be able to fake, you know, one or two, maybe even three questions, but mine has a hard time coming up with four. When I hit the number four successfully, I know I am now talking with my guy, with my primal masculine, and the levees and dams he has can now slide into place and keep my primal feminine from accidentally flooding the town. And that is such a great feeling. Share the rule of four with friends and family members. When your co-workers wonder if you've gotten onto some sort of prescriptive mood stabilizer because now you're so centered, tell them about the rule of four. And here's the really neat thing. The more you use it, the less you will have to feel like using it. Because here's what happens. Once you begin to use it, eventually here, and actually fairly quickly, a faster, updated version of the rule of four downloads somewhere along the line. And this new updated version constantly begins to run in the background for you. Isn't that wonderful? It really does. I swear it really does. And so you don't have to have the mechanical, yikes, that's one of those emotions. Yikes, yes, I see the yellow flags. What are the four scenarios? You don't have to do that. It does it for you. It does it for you. It really does. And it will change your life if you'll let it. So whenever you have one of those feelings cross your path, see that yellow flag hitting the field and give yourself time to navigate it. And then ask yourself to interpret it in at least four different ways. The answers you come up with may be enlightening and balancing in themselves, but it is the simple act of asking and answering yourself that activates your primal masculine and he comes and he brings with him his wonderful dams and levees and structure and objectivity and he helps your primal feminine balance her rushing waters. And I'll tell you something, that feels nice. And in that rising, all other storyboards rise with it. I hope you try it and see for yourself because you are the savior that your world is waiting on. Your world follows you like a shadow and when you rise, it rises with you. So, rise. I offer you these thoughts for your consideration.